Good morning, and welcome to worship as the first United Church of Christ Congregational here in Milford, Connecticut. That's right, you are the church, we are the church together. No matter who you are, what your family looks like, whether you have pliable or arthritic fingers, soft or calloused hands, with fingernails painted clear or bitten by nervous teeth, you are welcome here. I am Reverend Adam Eckhart, the senior pastor, and we have uh, several announcements to share this morning. As I mentioned last week, we've been busy down in the nursery the last couple of months, so if you have the skills and the interest to volunteer in the nursery on a Sunday morning with infants and toddlers, please speak with Kelsey DiCarlo, our faith formation minister, about that. We also are looking for a couple more youth group advisors for our middle school and high school youth groups. You can talk with Kelsey or Ashley or myself if you are thinking about that. Today is our backpack blessing. We invite kids to bring their backpacks up here as well as uh, adults as well. I brought my, my backpacks over there. Uh, it needs blessing as well. Um, and because, uh, you know, it says in the Psalms, bless the Lord, O my soul, and my Jansport. Okay, maybe not the last part. Uh, and then after 9.30 a.m. worship this morning, you are invited to head down to Fellowship Hall to eat some delicious brunch foods and learn how to join in some different ministry jams. So I guess there'll be jams and jellies down there as part of the brunch. Uh, Reverend Ashley and other folks are getting that ready right now. Uh, and, and there are many ways you can be involved in ministry, including jamming with uh, Jackie Nappy, our new music minister, and the adult choir at their first Wednesday evening rehearsal on August 30th at 7 p.m. in the choir room upstairs. You also can find out how to jam with the handbell choir when that gets started, and parents and children and youth can come to the Sunday, September 17th pizza party after uh, 10 a.m. worship. Um, to find out about the different uh, ensembles that will be offered for kids and youth. And also, um, going back to August 30th at 5.30 p.m., we have a bicentennial planning meeting because this meeting house here is turning the big 2-0-0, and so we want to celebrate that as we continue to also do uh, different uh, work and renovations on it, including on the exterior of the steeple. Remember that next Sunday, our meeting house or sanctuary worship here begins at 10 a.m., so not 9.30, so you can sleep in a little bit later, or if you come early, like I always say, you can help usher, uh, and chapel worship stays at 8 a.m., uh, but it moves back into the chapel. The program year gets kicked off on Sunday, September 10th with Sunday school, with an, the adult choir singing anthems, with the youth group information meeting that evening, and then Bible studies and other faith formation opportunities coming our way. Uh, a couple of them are starting, I believe, on September 19th. And then just after Labor Day, we're letting you know that the strategic planning team will be asking folks to fill out an eight-question survey. That should take about three minutes to fill out, not long, and it'll be available both online and also in hard copy form. The homecoming picnic is taking place on Sunday, September 24th, after our 10 a.m. worship service. We invite you to bring a side and a chair, if you can, and we'll provide burgers and hot dogs, as well as a uh, vegetarian alternative to those. And then we'll also provide drinks and games and lots of fun things for folks to do to interact with each other on the back Plymouth lawn. That is Sunday, September 24th, and we will have an RSVP form for that as well. I want to thank our liturgists from the Faith Formation Ministry this morning, and we thank John Haas, our uh, Faith Formation Ministry chairperson, and we thank our special musician this morning, William, and uh, we are just uh, so grateful for the gifts that people share here as a church community. So now let us uh, turn towards one another and greet each other with signs of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. And peace be with you, all those online. Will everybody join me in the responsive call to worship?
when we look to the rock from which we were cut and to the quarry from which we were dug, we see our ancestors. We see Abraham and Sarah who were alone until God made them the parents of men. When we look to the cornerstone of the church, we see Christ the Son of the living God. Beginning with Peter, God has made us into living stones. Our ancestors built this house, a rock of faith. Let us worship God who makes life and faith possible. Let's remain standing and sing our first hymn from the Black Hymnal, number 411. Join me in unison, our prayer of invocation. God, we come to you seeking wisdom and faith. Grant that we may learn wisdom where expertise and knowledge can improve life, community, and a sustainable creation. Grant that we may deepen our faith where devotion and love can improve life, community, and a sustainable creation. Visit us now with your wisdom and faith deepening spirit and set us all young and old on paths of learning and righteousness 
in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, and pray. Or in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And most of you may be seated now. Hello. Today, for our backpack blessing, um, I would like to invite down any kids or youth who are starting their school year coming up, as well as anybody who's starting a new job or a career change. Nobody's starting any new adventures? Nobody? Nobody's starting new jobs? If you are, and you're an adult who So, um, the first day of school, first day of something new can make you nervous, right? Are you, do you always go confidently into the year? No? No? Right? It, you can feel nervous, you can feel excited, you can feel scared, or you can feel nothing at all. Um, when I get nervous or excited about something, I feel it in my tummy. You know that like butterflies feeling, or like you feel like you gotta throw up? Yeah? No? Yeah? As we think about the first day of school, I think it's important that we acknowledge that all of these feelings are possible. Um, so today we have an activity, and um, any Faith Formation folks who are here to help, if you want to come down now. I am struggling today with this. I think I might need to switch to the handheld, yeah. <laughs> okay. We have a page. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for helping, James. Um, so we have this page here, and if you all could come up. Go ahead, come up. All of you. All of you. <laughs> so um, come take a look at this. So, a kind of scared face. What happy face? <laughs> what, um, we're going to ask each of you to do. Um, we've got stickers. And everybody's going to get a sticker, and you're going to go ahead, and you feel like you So if you're sad, worried, you're going to be here, um, feeling excited or happy, you're going to be all the way over there. And you can be in between. So on the little the and things so recognition some and how we stay healthy right a blood or eating because food is important to fueling our bodies original blessing was the act of creation in genesis god calls creation good multiple times to acknowledge the blessing the Lord has given us. As part of this community of Christ, we are all called to share that blessing with those around us. So today, looking at, looking at this, we've got people who are all over in how they're feeling. 
Um, and we are going to pray for God's blessing on all of you, no matter how you're feeling. So if everybody would join me in the spirit of prayer. Oh Lord, as a new school year begins, please guide and bless everyone starting a new journey. Bless these backpacks as they carry, bless these hands as they create, bless these minds as they learn, bless these hearts as they practice kindness, and bless these mouths as they speak your truth. Amen. So we're going to leave this the sheet. are going to pass out backpack tags to you all. And then those will be in the fellowship hall during the uh, jam brunch if you I'll put mine on now. God has given us gifts to share, prophetic ministry, serving others, teaching and leading, encouragement, diligence, cheerfulness, God giving without strings attached. Freely then we open our hearts, our hands, and our resources to the church's mission by bringing good news and God's love to the world. Will the ushers please come forward as our offerings and our spiritual commitments are given and received.
Join me now in our unison prayer of dedication. God, thank you for the amount of faith you have given each of us. Increase our faith, and by doing so, increase our generosity, compassion, resolve, and prophetic courage, so we may work as Christ's body in and for the world. With thanksgiving, we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you may remain standing as we sing together all things bright and beautiful. Please be seated. So our scripture reading for today comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 51, verses 1 through 6. Uh, three weeks ago, I preached on Isaiah 55, and so this is close to that. It's also kind of in the middle section of uh, the book of Isaiah, when the people of Judah, are some of them are still in exile in the city of Babylon, but are about to be released and be able to return to the city of uh, Jerusalem and to the country of Judah where they come from. So listen now for God's word. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed them and made them many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, 
and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. May God add rich blessings to this reading of Holy Word, and will you pray with me? O oh God, your word is rock to us. It is the solid foundation which does not sink. May we stand upon your rock and have confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, the rock of our salvation. Amen. In his book, A Short History of Nearly Everything, Bill Bryson writes, Sometime about a million and a half years ago, some forgotten genius of the hominid world did an unexpected thing. He or she took one stone and carefully used it to shape another. The result was a simple teardrop-shaped axe, but it was the world's first piece of advanced technology. It was so superior to existing tools that soon others were following the inventor's lead and making hand axes of their own. Eventually, whole societies existed that seemed to do little else. They made them in the thousands, says Ian Tattersall. There are some places in Africa, Kenya, for instance, where you literally can't move without stepping on them. It's strange because they are quite intensive objects to make. It was as if they made them for the sheer pleasure of it. Human technology really got going when someone took a natural rock and used another rock and shaped it and chiseled it, and broke off parts, and made a hewn stone. Makes me think of uh, something. This is uh, from my uh, family. This uh, is a geode. This was in, uh, there were a number of these that lined, I guess, the front yard of my father's house when he was growing up, and this is the last remaining geode. My dad sold a few of them at a garage sale when they sold uh, my grandparents' house. Um, And this is what a geode looks like when it is not broken, but then um, you can sometimes get something like this where they take a geode and they kind of slice it, and then you can see inside it, and so it's polished as well. Uh, And it's beautiful. They actually, at the Grand Canyon, they sold these as little night lights. They have little night lights, and then it would glow in a color, and that's beautiful as well. Not to say this is not also beautiful uh, in its fullness, uh, but this is a beautiful thing to behold as well. So today's scripture reading suggests that we are hewn rocks. That we come from rocks that predate us. We come from God. We come from ancestors. We come from traditions that have formed us. As I mentioned three weeks ago in a sermon on Isaiah 55, chapters 40 through 55 are the second of three sections of Isaiah. Each of the three parts of Isaiah take a distinctive perspective. Part one is a prosecutor laying out a case against Judah before they, some of them are exiled or imprisoned in far-off Babylon. Part three, at the end, advises Judah after their sentence is over and they're reunited. But in the middle, the second act among the three It's like a fellow inmate or a parole board encouraging a prisoner that they will soon once again experience freedom. Isaiah 55, which we just heard, lies in the heart of 2 Isaiah, sharing with Judah that life will improve and in their release, joy and gladness will be found. Today's reading leads off with words that are often uttered to someone who is dejected as hope is about to be expressed, the first word of the reading is listen. Listen to me. I imagine that you can think of someone who looked out for you or who looks out for you, someone who encouraged or still encourages you, someone whose attention and focus and soothing voice centers you in a time of crisis. Someone who might say, hey, buddy, listen. 
it's going to be okay. Listen, I have some good news for you. Listen, you, you need to hear this. Listen to me. Tune out all the background noise, all the hubbub around us that might distract. Listen to me. I'm here for you. So just that first word, listen, by itself is already good news to those who need encouragement and care. Through the words of Isaiah, God reveals the attention and the care. And then through words that follow, it continues. In this case, Isaiah, the prophet of Judah says, Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. It's like Isaiah is saying, Listen, I know who you are. I know that you care about God. Even after all that's happened, even after all of this, you still love God who made all this possible. We had the cities and the towns, the smiles and the frowns, the blues and the browns, the hospital beds and the gowns, the ups and the downs. You are not done with God yet. And God is certainly not done with you yet. Then Isaiah says, you listen to me, but now it's time to also look to pay attention to the visual evidence on your own. See for yourselves. And where does Isaiah tell Judah to look? Look back. Isaiah basically says, look back to Sarah and Abraham, to the rocks from which you came. Remember where you came from. Look back to the rock from which you were hewn, to the quarry from which you were dug. Isaiah here is saying, you rock, or you are rocks, and you come from other rocks, from God's rock. Now, I need to say here that today we bid goodbye to the theme of from this rock. During the last year, we've considered rocks of our faith and physical rocks, which have been around long before we were ever alive. And on a couple of occasions, I've mentioned Ashley's in my sabbatical from last summer. And as part of our sabbatical, we took our family to the United Kingdom. And in London, our family walked through the majestic St. Paul's Cathedral, built in the late 1600s after the London Fire of 1666 burned down the medieval version of that house of worship. Christopher Wren, who was appointed to rebuild the cathedral, decided that the new cathedral would predominantly be built out of Portland stone, that was hewn from quarries on the Isle of Portland, just off the southern coast of England. And that was a massive undertaking. But in addition, the innards and much of the foundation of St. Paul's was built by reusing the rubble from the former built out, burnt out cathedral. St. Paul's was built in part from the ashes of the cathedral that came before it. And so it still has that lineage of rock and stone from the building before it. Now the day after we saw St. Paul's Cathedral, our family traveled to Stonehenge, where we looked at the mysterious and profound rock assemblage hewn by ancient hands, perhaps to celebrate both life and to honor death in their community. Now there's two main kinds of rocks that they use at Stonehenge, and one of them, the blue stones, is not naturally found in southern England, and so researchers can only speculate how they somehow got the blue stones from far away all the way there to Stonehenge. To look back and to imagine the work that the ancient Britons must have undertaken to move those stones, it must have been monumental, but it was worth it because it mattered to their community. God calls us to look back at the rocks from which we are hewn, the rocks from which we come, and to be grateful for the monumental efforts that predate us and the monumental efforts that we undertake even today. You can look back 
at how we emerge from the wonders of creation from chemical and physical and biological processes that facilitate the miracle of life, and we can give thanks for the monumental efforts that God has undertaken for us to be alive. For me, for example, I wonder how humans can not only have a consciousness, but a coherent, singular identity that animates us and wakes us up each morning. It's still me here in this body this day. I have faith that God made our lives possible, and yet I still wonder on how, about how it all happens. I am hewn, and you are hewn from the rock of divine love. We are little flecks of being from the mother quarry of God. And isn't that amazing? You and I come from the divine rock. We are God's creations made for the sheer pleasure of life with God. And we, like the Israelites, can also look back to Sarah and Abraham who undertook the monumental task of trekking west from the region of Ur to the land of Canaan despite no certainty that God's call and God's promise would actually be fulfilled. You can look back to Sarah and Abraham for inspiration, as well as our own closer biological ancestors and ancestors of faith to see where we came from. I know in recent years I have done a bit of genealogical research and I have only begun to scratch the surface. I've only recovered a very partial list of the people who contributed DNA and nurture to my family, love, support, and care to each successive generation leading up to my family. Isn't it amazing to not only experience life, but also to inherit that life from those who have gone before us? And in many cases, for us to pass along that life to generations that are coming after us, to be a part of that great chain of the generations. We have been hewn by the biological processes that give us life. We have been hewn by our ancestors. We have also been honed and hewn by faith, sharpened by the principles of forgiveness and justice here, sharpened by the practices of prayer and praise, honed by generosity and justice-seeking, by humility and hospitality, by reconciliation and nonviolence. The church hews us and hones us into faithful and active people. Through Christian practices, we seek to flake off our destructive habits and be formed in the faith so that we can live out Christ's mission today, wounded and yet healing. Near the end of today's reading, Isaiah writes, Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look to the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. That's not a very hopeful message right there for the moment, is it? I know I hit those gnats off my arm when I'm outside in a summer evening. Isaiah and God are reminding us that life is fleeting, that even the rocks of St. Paul's Cathedral, of Stonehenge, and the Grand Canyon will someday be eroded down to dust. But that's not the end of the story, Isaiah says. Isaiah says, on behalf of God, but my salvation will be forever and my deliverance will never be ended. God, who formed humanity, will not leave us with our souls crumbled. God doesn't abandon the people of Judah. They are freed. They get to reunite and undertake the daunting and monumental task of rebuilding the temple and the city of Jerusalem. And the hearts of those who follow Christ are not left to crumble either. In John 16, we look back and we listen to Jesus say to his disciples, Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn. You will have pain. You have pain now, but your pain will turn into joy. I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. Life is a succession of building up and breaking down. 
For some of us, lots of breaking down. And in the world around us, and in the church, we sometimes feel overwhelmed by the breaking down part. Organized religion has gone through a lot of crises. This church, like any church, is, has its share of challenges. And you, you have been through a lot. You may even feel broken down right now. I know that I was kind of in this moment of not knowing if I was going to feel like I had been broken down or my family had because last weekend we took our oldest son David to Yukon to drop him off for band camp. It was going to be three of us taking him at first and then there was like a schedule snafu so it was just me driving him up but then it turned out that the rest of the family drove up after and kind of caught up with us. So all six of us were in the dorm room getting everything tidied together. Throughout it all, I felt those butterflies that Kelsey was talking about. I was wondering what this new chapter of our family's life would be like. It felt like our family was breaking apart in one sense. What will be the next time that we're really together? When will we ever be together the way that we were before that day? But we know that we will see him again and our hearts will rejoice. Some of us just saw him on Friday, so no big deal. We had to bring some more stuff we forgot the first time. And in this case, yes, there may be some breaking down, but at the same time, as a family and as individuals, we are being honed by the Spirit through new experiences. A new college education, by novel experiences as a new middle schooler in our family, a new high schooler in our family, another high school senior in our family, and as parents going through it all, trying to facilitate the somewhat controlled chaos of it all, right? New life is constantly breaking out of its former shell. Our souls are constantly being sharpened sharpened by these experiences for better or for worse, but ultimately for that moment when that ultimate reunion will be fulfilled. Isaiah and Jesus assure us with soothing voices, saying, Listen, you need to hear this. Things may be bad now, but it is going to be okay. It's going to be better than okay. Look, God has done wonderful things in the past. Even through this crisis, God will continue to do wonderful things with you and with us. God will always be with you. You will always be God's sheer pleasure, and you can find hope in God. We are rocks being hewn by God's grace. We are on a journey of being hewn and honed and eventually reunited with God. We, as the church, hone each other, both for the journey and for the reunion. So thanks be to God and amen. And let's join our hearts in a spirit of prayer. Oh God, after a long week of work and busyness, of weariness and hoops to jump through, the grind, in some cases also isolation, we come here, we come to you to be reminded of where we come from and where we are going. You, O oh God, are the source of all life, including ours. You, O oh God, are the horizon to which we journey one day at a time, day by day, moment by moment. We come to you, O oh God, because you have revealed and shared your love with us through your unbroken covenant with Israel, through your love made flesh through Jesus Christ, through your still speaking spirit that pervades this space and all time. God, you created us in your image, less than you, but reflecting your divine love and your faithfulness. In our imperfect likeness, may we accept 
our fate as mortal in flesh and yet immortal in communion with you. May we change our perspectives. We think we are hapless bystanders in your divine drama. May we remember our humble yet instrumental parts in bringing good news to each other, especially those who are going through trying times. God, we thank you as the summer season comes to a close, as backyard pools get closed up, as intrepid travelers put their suitcases in storage, as backpacks are filled with school supplies, as teachers gird their loins for the coming stampede of children. We give thanks for all that we have experienced, for what you offer us in life. We admit that we fall short of our promise at times, and we don't take heed of the needs of your earth and our fellow people. Forgive us, we pray. Help us in this new season to turn over a new leaf, to have a fresh start, to engage in a new ministry or volunteer role. Thank you for the many ways we can serve you and neighbor, near to home or far away, in the world or at church. Help us not just to act the part of a Christian, but to be transformed by what we do and by how it strengthens our faith. We give thanks, O oh God, for this church, for opportunities we have to sing new songs and choirs, to welcome familiar faces and new ones into your house, to teach and feed and heal in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, so many people are thriving today, and for that we give thanks. All we know that others are hurting or in need of prayer. Let your healing presence be with Spring Marie, Alexandra, David, Hayden, Gloria, Larry, Ruth, Diana, and others whom we name now. O oh God, grant them your healing spirit. And be with people who mourn the death of someone close to them as we name some of them now. God, grant those who mourn a glimmer of Easter hope and receive into your merciful arms those who have died. And now, God, in our comings and in our goings, bless us as we bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. i
For the benediction, we want to remind you that everyone is invited to the brunch and fellowship hall just downstairs on the first floor. For those who have served or are currently serving in a ministry, thank you for sharing about your ministry experiences. And for those who are curious about getting involved, learning about what the church does, or finding a new way to practice your faith, please come. Everyone, friends, children, members, come. You are welcome. Grab breakfast and visit the ministry tables and now may the quarry of God's love, the rock of Christ's salvation, and the hewing of the Holy Spirit hone us for ministry this week and beyond. Amen.